Um, so I'm working on this, this uh, on my flourishing class. And, you know, it's funny. Um, flourishing is, is very much... Now, I, I can't see the phone because it, it's quite high up. Um, but flourishing is, 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 is an interesting construct, right? So, you know, a lot of you know that I've come up with this new structure, which is this line of universal beauty loop. And by repeating the loop, we get, get this, right? Mm. Now, if you cut out part of the loop, and you actually make the shape, you get this twisted piece of flax thing, okay? So this, this I've found is actually the basis of all of the types of um, flourishing structures that you find in... in um, in uh, 18th century English writing master copy books. Now, the class I'm teaching in Dallas is looking at the Gothic capitals. And so, you know, your basic Gothic capitals sort of look like this. So these are some Let's, let's actually do a proper one instead of just doing some nonsense. And one of the ways to decorate Gothic capitals is by putting these things called hackles. Now, hackles are usually done in one, three, or five. So a hackle is essentially one. So you go out and back. Try to close that space up. Or you start at the top. One, two, three. Now, there are lots of other things that can happen inside of this. So we could, for instance, add an opposing hairline hackle. And this is very typical of, of what you find in... Um, in Jean Flamel's work from uh, the Très Richeur uh, for, the, uh, for the Duc de Berry. So I, I'm going to take this back a little bit further and show you some really crazy stuff. So one of the, one of the scripts that I'm teaching is, uh, is one of, the, uh, one of the, the structures that I'm teaching is something called a cadel. Now, uh, a cadel um, is... Oh, right, so let's just go through this very quickly. So in, in, in the Gothic period, you have these different types of letter forms. So we have these um, built-up letters called versals. They're roughly based on Roman capitals, so I'm just doing them really quickly. Or you have Lombardics, which are based on uncials. So essentially, they're built-up structures. So whereas with, you know, with... Roman, you have some Roman, you have some Anshals. So you take these shapes and you essentially draw the structure. So we'd get this and this and this and this and this and that. Or we get this and this and this and this and that. Now, you're not seeing, but I'm, I'm moving my body around the shape. So, so we have these, these, these bizarre shapes. Now, these shapes are built-up shapes. They're not written. So if they were written, they'd be written in real time. So essentially, um, Tom Kemp came up with this really great distinction for this kind of structure called a lettered letter. So this is a written letter, and this is a lettered letter. And so essentially, we see that this Unshal A has three strokes, one, two, and three. This A has three strokes, one, two, and three. But this A has one, two, so two strokes for every one, one uh, three, four, five, and six. So there are six strokes to make up something that should really be written in three strokes. So this shows that it is a constructed shape, a lettered shape, rather than something that is written. Now, once we have these shapes, we can start playing with them. So this is where I'm, I'm looking at, at how, well, teaching the students how to play with them. So one of the basic things is to take 
that constructed shape. And once you have that shape, what you do on the inside. So this is where it starts to get really interesting. Now, I'm using a few to eight brush pen. Ideally, you want to draw this before you just sort of jump into it. So what I'll do is I will add it. Some little lines and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some acanthus leaf work inside of this, inside of this shape. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making the acanthus wrap itself away around on the inside of the shape. Now, once you've done that, I'm just going to zoom in there just a little bit. Once you've done that, you have a couple options. You can either flood the inside here with uh, gesso and actually build up some real, you know, a real gold, really high sort of gold area, or you can flood it with a color. But this is this is by far one of the more complex forms of, of using a versal in an illuminated manuscript context. Now, of course, the type of decoration you're going to use inside of the versal is, uh, is going to be dependent on the kind of lettering you use next to it. So if, for instance, the A is, um, is at the beginning of a textualis quadrata um, block of text, you really wouldn't want to use something this fussy. Um, and then you'd go back in and you'd add little lines. I'm just going to finish this up so you can see what the detail looks like. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Um, now, if you if you weren't using a um, if you weren't using a a fairly standard sort of basic script like textualis, which is you know I, I don't mean to call textualis quadrata basic script, but you know in comparison to something like uh, Batard or Fraktur, um, it's much simpler. So if you were using fra uh, uh, textualis quadrata you'd probably want to use a really simple form of decoration from the Middle Ages. And this is really sort of standard, simplistic, illustrative work. Really, really easy. Now, normally the back would be in, um, you'd split this into red and red, uh, red at the top and blue at the bottom. And then you do white over it. So it gives it a really beautiful effect. Um, and it stands out from the letters, and the letters are obviously in black. Right, so, so those are sort of really, really basic shapes for, um, for some textualis. Now, there are other ways to use capitals. So, for instance, if you have a textualis capital that is, um, let's, use a, let's use a battard capital. So Batard uses a fair deal of manipulation. You could go back in and add a thin line there and And then add a little so of course you know I could go back on this line and I can add little circles which are very indicative of this period but you also find that these kinds of things are also indicative of this period and I know a lot of people see these kinds of um, curved lines and they think 
oh, it's very Spencerian or, or it might be sort of later English round hand. But these kinds of, of ornate decorations, these little augmentations actually come from, um, from the Gothic period. Let's zoom back out. Okay, now, uh, as you can tell, I'm a little bit overexcited because, you know, I'm not usually in the studio on a Saturday, but um, Tim said to me, how much work do you have to get done before you go away on Tuesday? And I said, you know, I, I just need to do a little bit more work. So, um, and I started doing this and, and then I, I just went a little bit crazy because I, I just really wanted to show you guys this. Now, moving on from a built-up letter form like, so, so you saw the textualis, so we have, you know, If you have fairly sort of straight standard textualis. Then you have fracture. So between those two, you know, you, you have a fair deal of, 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 of majuscules to play with. Then you have the, uh, the versals. I'll just do it on the side here. And you have the Lombardic. And you also have another kind of capital used in this period, which is a floret construct. So instead of filling the inside, so I'm just going to dot this in. Uh, what I'm going to do here, and, and this is, I, I absolutely fell in love with this structure ages ago when I was at art school. So most of these letter for mo most of this particular type of decoration, this kind of foliate decoration, comes from the Master of Mary of Burgundy, which is this astonishing manuscript made for Mary of Burgundy by the Burgundian scribe Nicholas Sperenik. So I'm just going to pull all of this together. I hope some of you are freaking out as much as I freaked out when I saw this. Um, And so the leaf structure that I'm using is basically an acanthus leaf. So sharpen that up a little bit more. Now, the fudate's really, really sharp at the tip. And if you don't want to use a fudate, I would suggest you use something like a, a sable brush. Um, there are very few brushes on the market um, uh, when I say brushes, I mean brushes that you would normally use for lettering that can produce this kind of decoration. Um, and of course, this would, this would have to come out from somewhere. So you could make a little, a little tree. I know it's great, isn't it? <laughs> so you could make a little tree. And of course, you can then go in and add some. Structure to the tree. So I had intended for that to actually be uh, an A, which I could still turn it into an A, but it, it looks more like a U. Now, um, Right, you're probably sitting there thinking, how much more is there? Well, 
So there is this other kind of letter form used in this period, which I mentioned earlier on, called a cadel. So a cadel is a built-up letter form, as these are also built up. But it's built up using a series of, of linear constructs. Now, the simplest way to construct a cadel is to use a textualist letter. So let's, let's use a K. Now, I'm just doing this really quickly. I'm not really going to take my time to do it. So, that really should be in the center. I'm gonna do this over, sorry. It's a really basic, simple Cadell structure. Now, most people will tell you that Cadells are continuous shapes. That's not necessarily true. So there are two types of Cadells. There's a true Cadell, and then there is a false Cadell. So Bill Hildebrandt did an absolutely astonishing book on flourishing, which is not the easiest thing to find. Um, and he looked at Cadell's in a really interesting way. And as you can see, I'm using the corner of the tool. And, and this is where the Cadell really comes into its own. So um, I, I need to count a little bit for this. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12. And one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 and 16. Oh my God. So, you know, they, they, they sort of, they sort of really test you. Um, now, there are other ways to produce a Cadell. So for instance, there's a really simple cad uh, Cadellic shape, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a false cadell. Do you see how here I actually constructed the shape from one continuous line and here I've just sort of built the lines up. So you could really sort of play with this. So we can go, so this is a mixture, one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we go one and two and three and one and two and three. So you see how this line relates to this and then these two relate to this. Uh, so that's just sort of basic Cadell construction. Um, I was just looking around very quickly because I think I'm, I need to grab one of the two because I was playing with this tool, doing some cadels, and it completely freaked me out. So, <laughs> um, so the thing about a cadel is it's 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 already complicated enough, and then I picked up a scroll and brush, which is you know madness. So you can do one and two and three, and four and five, six and seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. And let's put these together and put these together and put these together, put these together. And already you have something that's probably going to give you a headache. Um, now, there are other types of Cadells and there's a really beautiful Germanic Cadell, which is based on the structures used um, by Albrecht Dürer for Maximilian I's prayer book, which in, which in essence is actually a response to uh, the Master of Mary of Burgundy manuscript. 
um, written by Sparenik, because of course, Mary of Burgundy was Maximilian I's first wife. And, uh, and some of the decorations, some of the letter forms are absolutely spectacular. I mean, really, really phenomenal shapes. So uh, this, is not, this is not truly a Cadell, but it's very, it's very sort of Cadeau-like. So um, that could be an L or it could be an E. Um, so there's, 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 just, there's just so much possibility. Okay, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to stop here. I'll just show you guys this. Okay, so I, you know, I, I did say earlier and I, I can't see the camera because of, of where it is. Um, so, absolutely bonkers. Um, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, um, so you know, it, it it sort of comes back to this this discussion I have with lots of my students. What is flourishing? Now, um, I don't know um, if most of you saw, but we've made a um, a digital copy of the manual, which is on the Shopify site. So just go to the um, go to the link in the bio, the link tree bio. Uh, the bio, the Linktree link, and um, it'll take you to the Shopify site. There is a section on flourishing. Um, I am looking at expanding the section, but it's going to take a little while. Um, don't forget to join the calligraphy classes group. We have a concerted practice group coming up. Telma and I are working really hard on some, um, on some guide sheets that you will need to work through for the practice. It's going to be very, very tough going. Once the group starts, you're not allowed to join and you'll need to wait until the second round comes around. Um, and I've had a lot of people ask about doing something based on the copper plate script in the manual, which I'm starting to think about. Um, I'm not traveling as much because I need to stay home for <laughs> some obvious reasons. Um, and uh, I'm going to go and let my uh, over excitement about these um, the flourishing class in um, in Toronto and the Dallas class, um, and and really sort of you know come to terms with how flourishing and um, and 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 decoration is you know it's sort of one in the same and where does one start and where does the other end? So have a really really good Saturday uh, for those of you just starting your Saturday. Have a super Saturday for those of you who are uh, finishing your Saturday like I am. Uh, have a good evening. Uh, have a great weekend and I will do a post on Monday. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Hey, Leo. <laughs>